By the way, I hope you guys notice that he's got Pauline Oliveros on his shirt. Oh, yes. Oh, all right. <laughs> Pauline on an elephant. Nice. <laughs> ah, two old men. Well, well, well. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Always a pleasure. Good to see you. Yes. We've come back. <laughs> <laughs> My brother. My brother. <laughs> You're his keeper. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi. The Maggie. Maggie. How are you doing? How are you? Good to see you. Um, oh, nice dear. dear. Mm. Always good to see you. Mm. So we're heading this way. Good, good, good. There she is, the old machine. It's still going, huh? Look at that. Amazing. So whose patch is this? I just, I put some stuff out. Uh-huh. Yeah. You don't have this one going down here. I'm sorry. We running. We ran out of chords. Yeah. <laughs> we we ought to put up the first eight notes of Yankee Doodle. You know. You know when I. That was the um, first patch. On, on no, Bill, you're kidding me. Yeah, Bill McGinnis patched of it course, up. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, that's anyway, it. Anyway, it's still here and uh, cranking along, and it's in great shape. You got a couple of um, lights missing here. Ah, uh, that we do, but they still function. Yeah. So they're not necessary yeah. to function. Yeah. I had two 16s. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I didn't do a duplicate of this. Mm -hmm. I, I had three boxes, and I, I, I was different. And I developed a patch with um, 16 on one and 15 on the other with six outputs as voltages. Yeah. So I could change a pitch uh, on an oscillator 16 times 15 by, by adding the two. Right. Voltages and, and I, I got these long. The whole nice. silver apples was done that way. These great big long uh, things that would go in. If I added a third one with seven, I would get prime numbers yeah. and, and um, wow. fifteen and thirteen and seven, and then I would end up with they an almost never, infinite. They yeah, would never make but it, it took again. it took yeah. weeks because then I'd had nine, and and it was paired. I still was only going to three places. Yeah. Yeah. And look at these. Yeah. Uh, it's a little sad. Yeah, I, I took the tape off. Yeah. Down. That yeah. One. There, there's another keyboard that only We only have 10. the 12s and 12s. Oh, the 10 mm -hmm. was a wonderful, wonderful problem for people. They, everybody thought because we had 10, <laughs> ten fingers, fingers, and I show them the fingers. You only have mm -hmm. eight because you can't use these. Right. And, and then the, what, what was the 10 for? That was because we had these, these loop machines, 10 loop machines. And this was to be able to play the ten loop mm -hmm. machines. It's out. like a mixer, right? Pardon? Like a mixer. And yeah, it was a mixer. Right. It was it was that's so it was all designed it. to be Brilliant. able to do um, yeah. concrete. So yeah. you could you know touch this and you can have a decay, right. and uh, so you were mixing with your fingers. Mm -hmm. This isn't it, but yeah. there was a decay I so see. that when you released so your you finger release, from it, right? there would be a little so you could actually yeah. go fluidly from one to another, and uh, it was very nice. I always wanted a. A timer, you could move like just tiny, tiny, tiny increments over time. Because I, my dream at the Trips Festival was to put Big Brother through the um, through the machine, but have it just imperceptibly slowly changing, so that the whole audience would not be a, a aware of the change because it was happening so incrementally. But, but that, I don't think the booklet ever had one anything like that. No, there was no way to do that. No, because I know that's, that's too digital. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, mine from um, from Silver Apples is at the Library of Congress now, so they don't have it all fixed up. But it, um, it's you know, you know, when I when I got mine into the NYU studio that my studio that NYU made for me, and when I left New York, they didn't know what to do with it, and so they gave it to Michael Tchaikovsky, and he had it all those years, and he had it in his. His closet at, at um, in Aspen, uh, he, had, he had a little condo there because he taught there in the summer, and I finally convinced him, you know, to donate it to um, 
the Library of Congress, so he did finally do. That's um, wonderful. Yeah, the Smithsonian wanted this one, and uh, we just can't let it go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's too much a part of our history. Yeah. We never clean this off, you know. We don't want it to look pretty. We we just say that everybody's DNA is still on here uh -huh. from all the years, <laughs> right? You know, don't clean it, you know. When Rick was, came to sort of fix things and he did a great job on it, don't make it pretty. Well, that's don't a good touch idea. it. Just just fix yeah, the electronics the, and yeah, uh, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. The only time I learned twice. I raised my voice at dawn, and the first one was when he came in with the San Francisco Tape Music Center Incorporated. I said, what do you think we are, in business or something? He said, this is degrading. I said, <laughs> he said, okay, well then the next the next ones came out, Buchland Associates. He thought we were going into business and we were going to sell it. I, I, never, I, never thought, I never thought about that. I thought well, later. Well, maybe it was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I was so yeah. against making money, I couldn't believe it. So, yeah. but he stood in this room about five years ago, and he he just with, with the straightest face possible, he said, "I'd like to buy the Buchla back. I'd like to have it back, and I'll pay you the original fee, the commissioning fee, which was five hundred dollars." And well, he said actually, it was a straight it wasn't, fee. It wasn't. Well, he said it was, um, but anyway, it was five hundred dollars. Yeah. That was for parts. <laughs> <laughs> You so know, I, it took us two years to get the $500. <laughs>